I'm Mark Beaumont and uh, over the last decade I've taken on a whole range of expeditions, challenges. I guess my fascination is, is in first and fastest, it's figuring out what I'm capable of and trying to do stuff that's, that's never been tried before. Um, I left university and uh, pedalled around the globe, set the record at 194 days and 17 hours. So the big milestone was uh, to break the 200 day barrier and uh, that was an 18,000 mile solo expedition. I went on to cycle from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, a nine month journey down the length of the Americas, taking in some of the high mountains en route, so left the bike at the bottom and climbed Mount McKinley and Aconcagua. Um, I then left the bike behind and um, headed into sort of three, three and a half years of, of ocean rowing. Uh, I joined a team, first of all, through the Canadian Arctic. Uh, the dream was to, to make it to a, a, a position of the North Magnetic Pole by boat. So we took a, a boat, a rowing boat, 800 miles north of the Arctic Circle, um, which is an incredible statement of what's possible, of how the world's changing. Very intense team dynamic, totally different physical and mental challenge. And I backed this up by again heading into to a rowing boat and a team to try and take on the, the mid-Atlantic record, which was uh, Morocco to Barbados, and that was um, that was that was incredibly tough. The, one of the shortest but most brutal expeditions I've ever done. There's been lots of other challenges in between, running and swimming across Scotland, lots of other cycling and uh, and uh, mountain um, expeditions. But um, it's been it's been great fun, both taking on all these different physical challenges, and, but also trying to find a way to 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 film them and share them. When I um, when I set out to cycle around the world. I um, I got a television documentary made about it simply because I wanted to thank my sponsors for, for backing me. I, I, I wasn't a kid that grew up wanting to be on telly, but I met a couple of amazing guys who gave me an apprenticeship in, in documentary making, and that's ended up one of my main passions, one of the things I thoroughly enjoy. And, you know, the truth is I wouldn't keep going back out time and time and time again on these big journeys if it wasn't the opportunity to share it with a, with a global audience. Um, and, you know, that's from the personal satisfaction, but I also think there's a real greater good in sharing these trips and, you know, the confidence it gives other people to, to, to take on their dreams. Uh, the other, you know, harsh reality is I wouldn't have the opportunity to keep going back out if I hadn't learned how to capture the stories. You know, that is the, that's the business within the, the passion. And at the heart of any job should be a passion. And for me, that's the adventure and the sport of it. But the, the job... Is, is the broadcasting and, and luckily that's also something I, I, I really enjoy. The, the, um, the physical challenge is, is always interesting, it doesn't matter what the expedition is, when you're pushing yourself for that long, months, often, half a year sometimes, then um, my main worry is, is uh, breaking down, is not, is having an injury which just stops me in my path. So it's not like a competitive athlete, a competitive race where I'm worried about outperforming going faster, being stronger. Uh, I know I'm a fit guy, I know, it, I, you know I, can, I can endure the distances. It's about waking up every single day and being able to continue on a sustainable output and that relies on a sustainable input. My sleep patterns, my food, my hydration, getting pretty obsessed with what I can actually affect. So that's where my mind is, you know, that's, that's how I get through these big, big trips. And uh, and as I say, as long as it's a battle of attrition, as long as I set out in good shape and know that I've got the all-round conditioning to hopefully not break down and injure, then I can I can see it through. The emotional part is is simply experience. You know, those toughest times, those what I call trip points, things you don't expect, which threaten to stop journeys in their in their tracks. You have to have been there many many times to know what it's like to work through them, and to to realise they're the best things, best parts to look back on. So, um, you know, you get there the first time and it's tempting to give up. You know, now, honestly, having been through those so, so many times, you know, there's an excitement, there's a wry smile, there's a real fire, fire in your belly where, when the chips are against you because, um, you know, those are the times where you think, okay, you know, I'm back. You know, this is where I get really tested and I'm, you know, finding out something new and I'm going to, I know from experience, I'm going to look back most fondly on, on this part of the journey, even though it's the most difficult and scary and lonely at the time. And I've seen that time and time again with team expeditions, people who haven't pushed themselves on solo expeditions or are performance athletes who haven't done ultra-endurance expeditions, so haven't pushed themselves for weeks and weeks and months and months. 
how they can break down, be unable to function despite the physical ability when when things go badly wrong. And that's just experience. That's 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 the emotional preparation and, and just knowing yourself well enough. You can take on almost impossible tasks if your heart's in it and you're 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 loving the journey. Whereas if you stop enjoying it, that same level of, of fatigue, of endurance, of, 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 uh, of challenge is, is almost unbearable. So whereas some of the mountaineering and the cycling was, was I think, equally tough, um, I enjoyed it. Whereas I found in the Atlantic it was a journey which I, I didn't get the same satisfaction from. I couldn't, uh, couldn't find the same motivation. And the realisation was that for me it was as much about the world around me, the unknown in every day, the culture... And, and filming all of that, that 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 made the expeditions satisfying. So heading into the Atlantic was purely an inward looking journey. Physically and mentally, can I do it? And I was rowing two hours on, two hours off, two hours on, two hours off for a month, never sleeping for more than 90 minutes, rowing as hard as I could for 12 hours a day. That's torture, that's brutal, especially when you stop enjoying it. The, uh, the thing which gets you through the, the toughest time on the expeditions is is I think purely experience. Yeah, you need to... Certain characters, are, you know, certain people are wired up better for solo expeditions uh, or team expeditions, but ultimately you can learn a lot of it and it comes down to, to, to self-reliance and when I say experience, it comes down to knowing what it's like to see it through those toughest times. You know, when you first hit what I call trip points and they could last for a moment or weeks and weeks, um, where does your mind go where it's where it's faced with danger or it's been faced with you know a great challenge or discomfort um, the more you see those times through the more you know you look back on them fondly they're the times which you know are actually the most enjoyable in the long run in retrospect they're the stuff you you chat about with friends um, not necessarily the days when the sun's shining and you've got a tailwind and you're pedaling along on the bike effortlessly so um if you give up when you hit those trip points, those, those difficult times, you'll never learn. They are the best. You know, they're the bits where, you know, now I get a bit of a wry smile and a fire in the belly and I go, okay, I'm up against it again. But, but this is why I do it. I love it. And you learn a lot about yourself. And uh, ultimately, the solo experiences kit you out very well for team expeditions because you're used to looking after yourself. You know, you never ever turn to anyone else to get your, you, you out of bother. And there's a number of times my life's been on the line and uh, having the confidence that you can keep acting rationally, thinking rationally, being proactive is, uh, is a great comfort that you're not going to break down and, uh, and, and need others to, to get yourself out. Yes, you need to be able to communicate and work well with the team, but um, yeah, you learn through experience how to, how to cope with uh, any adversity. I can think back to rowing the Atlantic where two, uh, two guys saved the lives of six. Um, and it's not that the rest of the team weren't physically able, but you're capsizing in the Atlantic. You know, psychologically it was very, very difficult um, for everyone to, to keep being as proactive you know, when, when things went horribly wrong. The hardest part by far in any project is, is getting to the start line. Because getting to the start line takes a great deal of commitment and it's the period where you face most doubt, not just from yourself, self-doubt, but from others around you. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? What's the end purpose? If it's not your job, you know, justifying spending a period of time and quite often quite a lot of money on, on taking on a dream, especially when it's an expedition or a physical project, is, is difficult, you know. Scarce resources, and the most scarce of all is, is time. You know, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And doing something different from your peer group around you is also difficult. So, I think people's greatest fear is the fear of the unknown. They don't do things because they don't they haven't done it before, and they're they they worry about the what ifs. Life on expedition is is incredibly simple, and uh, certainly when it comes to things like cycling or running, you know, these projects don't take a, a great skill set. Yeah, if you're going to climb to the world's highest mountains or row an ocean or go to the Arctic, you might need a bit more experience or to go with somebody. But for some of the, some of the simpler expeditions I've done, it just takes the commitment to do it, to get a start line and actually see your, see your dreams through. So 
people who come to me every single week asking for advice on how to get started. Um, I always say, look, I can give you specific advice on kit and training and how to do what you do. But in terms of how to get started, that's, that's for you to answer. You, you just need to get the wheels turning and, and go and do it. Nobody, nobody's going to write that on a blog. Nobody's going to you know, film that and, and share that in a way which, which makes sense to you. You need to go out and learn for yourself what it takes to do these things and just, just commit to take on your ideas.